Hi everyone, I'm Renee and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this vintage jewel cake. For this video, I teamed up with a bunch of my YouTube friends for a collaboration featuring Wilton's Fondant Molds collection. I will have a link for the entire playlist at the end of this video, or you can find links to each individual project in the description box below. For my video, I chose a project featuring Wilton's new wedding jewel mat. This mat features a variety of beautiful jewels, but we'll just be using several of them for this project. The top tier of this cake features a brooch with a fabric ruffle behind it. To do this, I cut four strips of fondant gum paste mix that I rolled to a number three on a pasta machine. And so I'm making four of these little ruffles by moistening one end of the strip and starting in the middle, just pinching to gather it into a little ruffle. Then just attaching each of these individual ruffles into a circular shape. And I decided that this needed a little bit more stability, so I'm using a scrap of the fondant gum paste mix, and I'm just going to attach the four ruffle pieces on top of this. Then just set that aside to let it set up a little bit. Now we'll use the mat to create our molded jewels. First, I'll prepare the molds by dusting them very lightly with a little bit of cornstarch. Then knocking the mat against the tabletop to knock out all the excess powder. I'm working with a 50-50 fondant gum paste mix. You want to use a little bit at a time and roll it in your palm to eliminate any cracks. Then start filling your mold from the center out, pushing it to just fill the mold. I'm using this circular brooch mold first and as you can see it makes it really easy if you have just enough of the fondant gum paste mix to just fill the, the cavity. And it easily pops out for a nice clean molded piece. Next I'm going to use this flower shaped jewel piece and again using just enough of the fondant to fill the cavity start from the center out and push it out towards the edges. Making sure that you're not overfilling your cavity makes it so much easier because you don't have to trim your edges at the end. You have a perfect piece all in one go. Next I'm going to use the mold that has these three teardrop jewel shapes and I rolled the fondant into a kind of a little log to help it fill the shape a little bit better. And just like all the other ones, use just enough to fill the cavity and it makes life so much easier because you don't have any rough edges. And we'll need 24 of these for the pattern around the cake, plus a few extra just in case. And the next mold we're using is the smaller of these two teardrop shapes. And you're going to want to make 16 of these. And the last shape we're going to use from the wedding jewel mat is one of the longer bands. So you're going to want to roll your fondant into a long skinny rope. And we're using this bottom studded band. And you just press the skinny rope down into it. And this is where it helps again to have your fondant be thick enough to just fit into that mat so that you don't have to trim anything at the end. And if you've found that it's not quite level, you can go in and add little pieces to the back. I find it really helpful to mold all my pieces first, so you can keep them on a cookie tray covered with plastic wrap 
in the meantime so they don't dry out too much. It's not so important with a square cake that's going to have a flat side, but for a rounded cake, certainly this would really be a big help. Now I'm going to be painting a lot of my pieces gold, and I'm using this edible gold paint by Rainbow Dust. It's 100% edible, and I'm using the dark metallic gold. And I'm thinning this out a little bit with vodka because the paint itself is pretty thick and goopy. For this first circular brooch piece, I'm just going to paint the entire thing gold. Then for this flower shaped piece, I'm going to paint only the flat parts gold. And the jewels themselves I'm painting just with some super pearl that I made a paint using vodka. You could of course just use any color luster dust if you want to have a color other than white jewels. Next we'll work on this three piece and again I'm painting just the flat parts and this studded part gold. and painting the jewels with the super pearl. And the single teardrop will also paint with the super pearl. Here I already have my cake stacked and covered with fondant. I use this light blue for the top and this navy for the bottom. And this is a six inch and a four inch cube. I'm adding gold bands as the border. So I'm using a piece of ribbon just to measure the perimeter of my tiers. And then using this as a guide to measure fondant gum paste mix that I have rolled to a number three on a pasta machine. I'm cutting a half inch thick border for the bottom tier and then a three quarter inch border for the top tier. And then I'm going to use the gold paint mix and paint these borders gold. And finally I'm also painting those studded bands gold and I found it easier to kind of stipple the paint on rather than make longer strokes. Now that all the decorations are prepped and painted, we can start adding them to our cake. I'm starting with the gold bands and on the bottom tier, I'm adding the half inch band, leaving a little overhang and starting at a corner. And this will help us get a nice neat joint. For the top tier, I find it easier to roll up my band into a coil first, and as long as the paint has dried, it should be no problem. And just go around and add that the same way. Next we'll add the brooch to the top tier and I'm starting with that fondant ruffle which should have dried enough to set up but still be somewhat flexible. And I'm using thinned out piping gel as my glue for this project and I'm just going to glue that right 
on the seam between the top and bottom here. Next I'm going to use this thin piping gel as glue on the back of that round gold brooch piece and add that right on top of the ruffle. And then I'm going to use some of my glue and add the flower piece on top of that for a nice layered brooch look. And you may just need to hold it in place for a few seconds until the glue grabs hold. Now I'll begin the bottom tier decoration by putting some of that thin piping gel on the back of the studded bands. And I'm going to look for where I want the placement, which is towards the top, maybe the top one third. And I'm starting with the middle of three bands that I'm going to put on each side. And this will help me get my placement correct. You want to leave a little overhang on each side to account for the bulk and thickness of the additional bands, but you then trim so you only need like maybe one or two of the studs overhanging. Here you can see I kind of smudged some of the gold paint onto my fondant with the piping gel because it was wet and I'm just using an X-Acto knife and kind of scraping that off and it cleans up beautifully. So I added a, another band on top of that first one we laid down and here I'm putting one underneath it and that creates the, the band for our decoration. And now I'm going to use the three piece jewels and I'm starting in the middle and just going to glue those on on either side, trying to make sure that they're perpendicular to one another. And I'll also add a set of two of these jewels on either end for a total of six. And starting in the center helps you kind of space it out. I'm just eyeballing it, but of course you can use a ruler if you want to be exact. Then I'm going to use the teardrop jewels and go in between each of those. Again, one on top and one on the bottom, perpendicular to one another. And I'm also eyeballing this, but you can use a ruler if you'd like, or you can count the little studs on the bands and that might help you if you want exact placement. And that's our pattern. And you just continue this pattern around all four sides of this bottom tier. Starting in the middle, and this will help you line up your placement, add your jewels, and you just repeat the pattern all the way around. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to check out the other projects from this Wilton Fondant Mold collaboration. You can click on screen now for the full playlist or find links to each individual video in the description box below. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss new videos.